Hello everyone, my name is Quackney, and I'm here to ask and answer one question. Can you beat Fallout 3 as Butcher Pete? That's right, another roleplay challenge based on a song within the game. This time the character Butcher Pete from the song Butcher Pete by Roy Brown. This song is featured in Fallout 3, 4, and 76, so you've probably heard it before. The song describes a man, Butcher Pete, who spends every day all day chopping up women's meat. Pretty sinister. But what you might not know is that this song isn't actually about some prolific psychopathic killer. It is in fact about a man with a long knife who lays some mad pipe on a lot of women. Single women, married women, old maids, or otherwise. And after being thrown in jail at one point, even his cellmate. It's pretty clear that Butcher Pete is a man of broad tastes. So that takes us to the challenge. Since there aren't really any ways to lay pipe in Fallout 3, I decided to take the song more literally and be that knife-wielding psycho chopping up women. Now let's explain the rules of the run. I can only use knives. I must kill any woman I meet, though I do not have to do this instantly. This is mostly for my own sanity, but also because there are essential NPCs that cannot be killed when you first meet them. Some other additional information, I will be playing on the normal difficulty of the PC version of Fallout 3 with all DLCs and no mods. With the rules established, let's get on with the run. Skipping through character creation and the death of my mother, I am now a baby and Liam Neeson is my daddy. I escape the confines of this playpen and pick up the I'm Special book and set my special stats as follows. 8 Strength, 1 Perception, 6 Endurance, 1 Charisma, 8 Intelligence, 8 Agility, and 8 Luck. Being a psycho murderer and not getting caught is going to be tough, so I have to be strong, cunning, and lucky to survive. I'll be getting my strength and luck up to 10 during this run to finish out the build. Dad then reads a passage from the Bible to me that Mother liked, but I fear no God, so I don't listen. Also, I can't read or speak yet, so how am I supposed to remember this? Nine years later, and I am now 10 years old. And on my 10th birthday, the overseer gives me my pit boy and tells me I'm now old enough to start working. Thanks. Now it's time for his daughter, Amada, to give me her present, a Grognak the Barbarian comic book. How did she know I was doing a melee playthrough? How thoughtful. But in the end, it will not grant her mercy. Andy the robot cuts up my cake and this is the genesis of my future brutality. The way that cake explodes makes me feel a certain way, and I like it. Wally says my party sucks, and I happen to agree. And then old lady Palmer gives me a sweet roll. Can't buy me off, Miss Palmer. Nice try. Now there's Butch, who is mad at me about the ruined cake and his alcoholic mother. So much so that he decides to try and steal my sweet roll. I would try to beat the snot out of him, but the game doesn't let me put up a fight. But luckily, Officer Gomez puts a stop to him. Dad tells me to go meet Jonas for a surprise, and that's when I run into Beatrice. For my birthday, she gives me a poem. You're definitely going to die. And for my surprise, I get a BB gun. I prefer to be more hands-on, but it can't be helped right now. I shoot some targets and kill a Radroach before posing to take a picture with my dad. Six years later, and it's time to take the GOAT exam. But before I head to my exam, I'd be sure to tell Butch, now the leader of the Tunnel Snakes Gang, that Amada is sensitive about her weight so they can more effectively torment her. I'll skip through the GOAT because it's not all that interesting and get right to my tag skills. I went with medicine, melee weapons, and repair. Three more years later and I am rudely awakened by Amada. She tells me that my dad left the vault and her dad, the overseer, is going crazy. As I take off to follow my father, Butch stops me begging for help. His poor alcoholic mother is being eaten alive by radroaches. I steal his switchblade and in that moment, my life changed. I knew I could never go without a knife in my hands again. Then I decide to put my knife to the test. This is for trying to steal my sweet roll, Butch. She called out for her Butchie. How cute. Hello, Mary. Goodbye, Mary. Hey, Tom. Now it's time to chop up Officer Mac and the Overseer so I can get the hell out of this vault. I take the Overseer's key and password and make my way to the secret escape tunnel in his office. I suppose not, but it's also not very nice of you to not die. Amada is an essential NPC, so she can't be killed. Yet. 
At the entrance to the vault, I get attacked by two more guards. I kill one, but then my knife breaks during the struggle, so I flee. When I leave the vault, I level up, and I take the Lady Killer perk, for obvious reasons. I then make my way to Megaton. I go to Craterside Supply and talk to Moira to get my knife repaired. And at one point, I alt tap my game, and it crashes. Uh-oh. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Back in the game, I steal Sheriff Sim's house key from his pocket. Inside his house, I get the strength bobblehead, raising the skill to 9. I then head to Moriarty's saloon and meet Mr. Burke, who tells me that Megaton deserves to pay for being a cesspool of sinners. And the best way to do this is to detonate the atomic bomb sitting in the center of the city. I couldn't agree more. I then talk to Moriarty, who tells me he saw my dad come through, but in order to get that information from him, he wants me to collect dead oat to him by a drug-addicted woman named Silver. I head to her home and make quick work of her, and collect the debt. I also find a knife in her kitchen, so now I have a backup weapon. Checking out the hollowed rock behind Megaton, I unfortunately don't find anything too useful, but it was worth a shot. I also see a caravan with a female guard. I take the only reasonable approach I can think of. Returning to Moriarty, he tells me that my dad and I were actually from outside of Vault 101, and he headed off to the Galaxy News radio station. I'm almost finished with Megaton, but before I do what needs to be done, I help out Moira with her Wasteland Survival Guide. She needs me to check out the Super Duper Mart and find some medicine there. The reason I do this quest is to get the food sanitizer. This makes food give more HP and less rads, and because I will have a hard time finding vendors to buy stim packs from throughout the run, this will be very important for my survival. So I head to the Super Duper Mart and start to clear it out. I get the key to the back door off of one of the raiders and let myself in, finding a bunch of medicine and supplies inside. While in the back, I alt tabbed again. Big mistake. This hard locked my game on the pause screen, but I could hear the game was actually still running in the background. When I relaunched, my game crashed. This time crashing so hard that Streamlabs crashed and corrupted the footage of me fighting my way out of the Super Duper Mart. Returning to Moira to report my success, she gives me the food sanitizer, and now it's time to get to work. I'd be sure to take a quick break from all the hacking and whacking to arm the bomb at the center of town. Jenny Stahl apparently missed the goings on around town as somehow she isn't terrified of me. With Megaton empty, my job is complete. At Tenpenny Tower, I tell Mr. Burke that the charge is ready. He gives me the honor of pressing the detonator, and Megaton is no more. As thanks, he gives me a room at the tower to live in, and then tells me I can speak to Lydia to purchase things for my room. Lydia, huh? That's a woman's name. I kill Alistair Tenpenny because it's not like he'll sit there and watch while I chop up his guests. And then I take out Mr. Burke. God damn, that scream. Afterwards, I visit Lydia to buy the new Coca-Cola machine for a room. Using the machine makes our colas ice cold, which heals significantly more. After all is said and done, I've decided I want this place all to myself. So now, it's time. I take a bunch of drugs to prepare myself and set off to fulfill my destiny. And just like that, Tenpenny Tower is empty and belongs to me now. As I leave, I happen upon a man named Willie, who's dying of thirst, so I give him a drink out of the goodness of my own heart. 
Now it's time to get the weapon I'll be using for the rest of the run, the Stab Happy Knife, located on this raider in the unmarked location called the Raid Shack. Stab Happy is a combat knife variant that does increase limb damage and has a higher crit multiplier. On my way to Galaxy News Radio, I am warned to avoid the town of Greyditch, which has been burned down by a bunch of mutated fire-breathing ants. However, I want to do the quest associated with this town to get my strength to 10. So I go through everyone's favorite part of Fallout 3, the underground metro station. <laughs> you serious? At Great Itch, I save a child named Brian Wilkes. He tells me that he can't find his dad, so I agree to help him. He's dead. I return to Brian and give him the bad news, but vow to find the source of these fire ants and put a stop to them. Which means I have to go back into the metro. Eventually, I meet Dr. Lesko, the man responsible for this whole debacle. He explains that he had meant to destroy the ants by mutating their eggs, but instead made them more powerful. But he is confident he can do it correctly if given another chance. First though, he needs me to clear out the guards to the fire ant queen so he can get close enough. And if I leave the queen alive, he'll give me a power up in the form of a mutation. That's what I'm here for. I take out the last fire ant guardians and I leave the queen alive. When I return to Dr. Lesko, I ask for my reward and choose the ant mite perk, which increases my strength by one to its maximum of 10. And don't worry, just because the queen is an ant doesn't mean she's safe. I return to Brian to tell him that the ants are all taken care of and he tells me he saw them all start to kill each other after Dr. Lesko did his thing. I then tell him that I'll find him a new place to live. That was a lie. Then I decided to just finish up my build. So it's off to Big Town where some of the members have been kidnapped by super mutants. So of course, I'll rescue them. I go to the nearby police headquarters. I rescue Red and Shorty, then make my way back to Big Town, which is then attacked by super mutants. After defending the town, Time Bomb gives me a lucky 8 ball, which increases my luck to 8, bringing my total luck up to 9. And just as I start hacking and whacking, my game crashed. Now it's off to Arlington House to get the luck bubble head to max out the luck stat and finishing our build. Finally back on track to finding my dad and I meet the Brotherhood on their way to Galaxy News Radio to defend them from a super mutant attack. I give them a hand but when the super mutant behemoth shows up I just have to run around while the Brotherhood shoots it to death. You're supposed to use the fat man but... <laughs> Sentinel Lions is an essential NPC so she can't be killed. Then I meet the Galaxy News Radio DJ, 3Dog. He tells me he knows where my dad went, but in exchange for that information, he needs my help with what he calls the good fight. He needs a new satellite dish to boost the radio signal because some super mutants shot some holes in the current one. So it's off to the Museum of Technology. I steal the Virgo 2 communication disc and install it on the radio tower. And then return to 3Dog who tells me my dad went to Rivet City to meet Dr. Lee. And it's right about here my game crashes again. And again, I lose some footage. A lot more this time. So I had to download the VOD off YouTube for my adventures within Rivet City. I arrive at Rivet City and... Boy, the PC edition of Fallout 3 does not like this city. I lost a lot of footage of me going around, buying all the drugs and stim packs I could find, and then waiting 72 hours for shops to restock and doing it again. During this, my game crashed several times. I don't really know how many times exactly, so I'll go with a comfortable three, but it was definitely more than that. After I get frustrated with all of that, I go inside the marketplace to do what must be done. And my game crashes. Reloading in, my game crashed immediately again. I'm able to avoid another crash by leaving the area as soon as I load in, but at this point, I'm so over the city, I want to leave as soon as possible. I lost the footage of me talking to Dr. Lee, but she tells me my dad wanted to revitalize Project Purity, a passion project of theirs in the past that could bring fresh water to the entire wasteland. But the project fell apart when dad left for Vault 101. 
Unfortunately, to get out of this crash loop, I had to reload a save before I bought all those stim packs. But I found a great way of letting out all my frustration. I have to kill all of you. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. Ah! Okay. You know, I go to Project Purity and find some holotapes from my dad saying he went to Vault 112. I love this little cat and mouse we have going on. Inside the vault, I speak to a robo brain that gives me a jumpsuit and tells me to go to the assigned Tranquility Lounger. I do as I'm told and hop inside the simulation. Inside this fake suburban prison, George tells me to go talk to Betty, and that she's waiting for me. You are my dad. You're my dad. Wookie, wookie, wookie. Then I meet Betty. She has everyone trapped inside the simulation, and she assures me that we're going to have a great time together. First on our list of activities is to make Timmy cry. Easy. I find a brochure for a military school in someone's house and tell him that's where he's going. He gets a little upset. You're disrespecting a future U.S. Army soldier. Back to Betty, she reveals he is not a little girl, but in fact, a crazy German scientist who's been torturing everyone inside the simulation. My next task is to break up the Rockwell's marriage. So I steal some ladies' underwear and plant them in Mr. Rockwell's garage and tell his wife that he's been cheating on her. Now I must kill Mabel Henderson, but he asked me to be creative and not just beat her to death. So I hack the Mr. Handy in her home and she gets cut up like a birthday cake on a 10 year old's birthday. Our final task is to kill everyone left in the simulation as the pine sized slasher. Betty hit a mask and a knife for me and a doghouse to use, so I grab my things and do what I was born to do. I talk to Betty one last time and he agrees to let me and my dad out of the simulation. Talking to Dad, he tells me he wants to finish Project Purity, but they're missing a vital component, a Garden of Eden creation kit, or a Gek for short. We return to Rivet City and Dad talks Dr. Lee into joining Project Purity again. I'm getting really tired of this place. At Project Purity, Dad tells me that he and the doctors aren't much of fighters, so I need to clear out the super mutants by myself. The super mittens were easy, however, this turret, not so much. Turns out it's immune to melee damage and my science skill is too low to hack the terminal to turn it off. So I have to stand here while Dad shoots the door frame until he misses it enough and hits the turret to destroy it. Inside Project Purity proper, Dad tells me to press a bunch of buttons to restart the facility. After my final task from Dad, the Enclave arrive to mess everything up. I rush back to Dad to help him, but he's locked behind this door and I can't get to him. Then he goes and blows himself up. All I'm saying, I probably could have taken them. Dr. Lee and I escape through some tunnels and take refuge with the Brotherhood of the Seal at the Citadel. Do these guys seem unusually small to you, or is it just that they're stuck in the ground? Dr. Lee gives the rundown to the Brotherhood leaders, and then I make my way to Scribe Rothschild to see if he can help me find a Gek. He tells me that one can likely only be found inside vaults, and I could look through some archives of theirs to find one. This computer tells me that Vault 87 should have one. To get through the vault, however, I have to go through Lamplight Cavern, which is run by a bunch of children who don't like grown-ups like me. To get on their good side, I agree to go rescue some of their friends from slavers at Paradise Falls. Once I get there, I waste no time getting to chopping. Everyone else is dead and the children are free to escape. Don't think I didn't see you, Miss Jeanette. Returning to Lamplight Cavern, Mayor McCready says I'm not too bad and gives me permission to go through the vault. But he warns me that it's inhabited by super mutants. I go through these caves no problem, cutting down any super mutant I come across. Inside the vault, like most of them, it has seen better days. In my search of the vault, a super mutant locked up in a room calls out to me asking to be set free. 
His name is Fox and he's clearly more intelligent than the others and says that he even knows where the Gek is. He also tells me that it's an area of extreme radiation, something he's immune to. Should I let him out, he'll grab it for me. And I agree. Pulling the fire alarm opens all the doors and we make our way to the Gek. Just as he promised, Fox gets the Gek for me and then we part ways. On my way out, however, something shocks me and knocks me out. The Enclave Good work. I awake at their base of Rock Raven and have my interrogation interrupted by President Eden, who tells me he wants to speak to me face to face and that surely we can come to some kind of agreement. While getting my things out of the locker, my game crashed. And then I finally meet President Eden, who's actually an AI based off of previous US presidents. The long and short of it is, he wants to use Project Purity to rid the world of mutations created by nuclear war. By adding in a modified virus to the water, anything mutated that drank it would die and only pure humans would survive. I like the sound of that, but I want the credit for it, so I talk the computer into killing itself and self-destructing Rock Raven. Well, that was easy. Back at the Brotherhood, it's time to take back Project Purity. I'm given some power armor, heck yeah, and Liberty Prime is brought out to attack. This mission is stupid easy, you basically just follow Liberty Prime as he annihilates anything in our path. I didn't even draw a weapon. I have a final showdown with Colonel Autumn at Project Purity, in which he stood no chance. Dr. Lee calls in warning us that something is wrong with the purifier. I ignore her and input the modified FEV virus I got from President Eden. After that, Dr. Lee tells us that someone needs to turn on the purifier to release pressure before the whole thing explodes. However, whoever turns on the purifier will die from radiation. I'm sure as hell not doing it, and I've been trying to kill Sentinel Alliance, so this seems like a good opportunity. I tell her to do it. Sucker. I lose consciousness and wake up two weeks later at the beginning of the Brotherhood of Steel DLC. Unfortunately, Dr. Lee cannot be killed. Despite the main story being complete, Dr. Lee actually leaves the Capital Wasteland and goes to the Commonwealth. You can actually meet her in Fallout 4. She's working for the Institute. So, we cannot kill her. But there is one woman we met that we can go kill. Our old dear friend, Amada. I head back to Vault 101 and get a quest to help them from a distress signal. Amada is still an essential NPC, but after this quest, she is not. So, I run in and kill the Overseer to end the quest as quickly as possible. Then all I have to do is talk to Amada to finish up the quest, and now she's mine. And with that, the game is over and I can finally answer the question. Can you beat Fallout 3 as Butcher Pete? Well, kind of. A literal interpretation, yes, but I would need a lot of mods to be the real Butcher Pete. It was fun playing through Fallout 3 again, it's been a long time. Last I played was shortly before Fallout 3 was released, though I don't remember the game crashing so much back then. I went for a crit build to make the low damage weapon for this run actually feel strong, and if the ninja perk actually worked properly, I would have a 100% chance to crit at the end of the game. Unfortunately, you have to mod the game to fix that perk, and I really just didn't feel like it. My next run is probably going to be a New Vegas run again. When I did my Arizona Ranger run, I learned that katanas were in the game, they must have been added in one of the DLCs I've never actually played, so I have an idea using katanas that sounds pretty fun. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to leave a thumbs up. If you want to see more, subscribe. Leave a comment below for what challenge one you'd like to see next. And with that, I'll see you next time.